I had sort of this cool idea here to just go over all of the defunct coasters I've ridden so far and just do a little brief review on each one of them. I just figured it'd be best to compile all of them into one video since I'm just going to be talking real quick about them. So I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to be reviewing these in alphabetical order. So starting off, we have Big Dipper at Geauga Lake. This was a classic wooden roller coaster that originally opened in 1925, and it went under a couple different names before it became the Big Dipper. Originally opening in 1925, Big Dipper was originally called Skyrocket until 1947 to 1950. Then after that, it became Clipper. And then in 1969, it became Big Dipper. This was a great classic old school wooden coaster. Small, really fun, great airtime, and those trains were absolutely perfect. No seat belts, just the buzz bar. Great ride, and I, I miss this ride so much. This was honestly probably my favorite ride at Geauga Lake, and I am really sad that this ended up getting demolished and it wasn't saved. Great loss here in my opinion. I would give Big Dipper a 7.5 out of 10. Very smooth from my experiences and I rode it many times. Great airtime and just overall a really fun classic wooden coaster. Next up is Disaster Transport. Cedar Point, the Intamin bobsled coaster that originally opened in 1985 as Avalanche Run. Then for the 1990 season, it was converted into Disaster Transport and they built a big blocky building around it, gave it all of this like space theming, and the story that went along with it was kind of really contrived and confusing, didn't really make a whole lot of sense. And from what I hear, at first, the, all the theming they had in there when it was working, it was kind of cool, but over time it just fell into disrepair and things were just left as they were. Eventually, this ride got demolished after the 2012 season. This ride sort of has a cult following around it. I mean, there's nobody I think that actually actually misses this and wishes they wouldn't have taken it out because in my opinion we got a really worthy replacement in gatekeeper and that front section of the park looks absolutely beautiful now it looks so much better without that big blocky building i did have fun on disaster transport the times i wrote it but it wasn't anything outstanding so definitely happy with what we have now i would give disaster transport a five out of ten it was a decent ride Next up, Double Loop at Geauga Lake. This was the classic aerodynamics double looping coaster, as the name would imply. This layout was just really basic, really basic. It was a really short ride, 1,800 feet of track. Had two inversions, which were the two vertical loops. Top speed of 36 miles an hour. All this ride consisted of was basically a drop, a turnaround, and the two vertical loops. And that was it. This ride ended up getting scrapped after Geauga Lake closed. Not a real significant loss in my opinion. I mean, it was an okay ride. I don't remember it being painful at all. It was a classic aerodynamics coaster. Sad to see it gone because Geauga Lake is gone now. But I would give Double Loop a 5 out of 10 as well. Decent enough ride. Nothing special though. Next up, we have the infamous Mean Streak at Cedar Point. Wow, how times change. That's all I can say. Mean Streak was awful. And I consider it the worst coaster I've ever ridden personally. The last time I rode Mean Streak was probably in 2007, I want to say. I rode it several times. I tried to give it many chances because I thought, oh, maybe I'm just getting bad rides on it. I gave it many chances. And the last time I rode it, my back hurt so bad after riding it. And I was really young when I rode all of these coasters, mind you. Everyone on this these lists, like I haven't rode, ridden any of these in years. Obviously the ones at Geauga Lake. Geauga Lake's been closed for 12 years now. And uh, Mean Streak, last time I rode was about 2007, I wanna say. And just absolutely terrible ride. Boring, sluggish, trims on the first drop. There was nothing special to it, in my opinion. It was good looking, it was a nice looking ride. That's all it was good for. They took, in my opinion, one of the worst coasters in the world and turned it into probably the best coaster on the planet. And that's absolutely amazing. Mean Street gets a four out of 10, which I feel like that's a little generous to be honest, but four out of 10, it, it's a pretty bad ride. Next up, Raging Wolf Bobs. This is the second worst coaster I've ever ridden. This was also an absolutely awful, awful, awful wooden coaster. It's so unfortunate. 
it, this was another really nice looking ride. They had it painted white, really cool looking. The ride layout was patterned after the Riverview Parks Bobs, which was a legendary ride for its intensity at the time, but this ride did just did not live up to that ride whatsoever. This was 80 feet tall, 50 miles an hour, built by the infamous Din Corporation. Absolutely terrible ride. So rough. It just jackhammered you everywhere, just like Main Street. Just boring. And it, it just consisted of these huge stretched out turnarounds, basically. No airtime. Just just not a good ride. I do not miss this one. I'll also give Raging Wolf Bobs a 4 out of 10. And once again, I feel like that's being a little generous, but terrible ride. Next up, we have Villain, the last wooden coaster at Giaga Lake, which I'm going to talk about. Now, with Villain, this is pretty interesting. I would consider Villain one of the worst coasters I've ridden, but it had so much potential, and I always thought it was so unfortunate that it was such a painful ride. It was always so rough from what I remember. It was always a really, really rough ride. And... It had a great layout. This was a really nice looking hybrid CCI. Great Custom Coasters International wooden coaster with an awesome, really unique triple out and back layout. There was even a little bit of a trick track in there. So that was really cool. It had Gerslauer trains on it. And this ride was just not great. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. I feel like that's way higher than I probably would have rated it back then. And Part of that rating might just be, you know, the nostalgia of it and Giaga Lake is gone and everything and I would like to see something like this again, but I feel like if I wrote it now I might enjoy it more, you know, with more of an open mind, but what I know is when I rode this when I was really young and went to Giaga Lake, it was just a really painful ride to me and I didn't really enjoy it that much. So uh, Villain, I'll give a 6.5 out of 10. The last coaster we're going to talk about on here in my defunct coasters list is Wildcat at Cedar Point. Not much to say about this. This was a standard clone model. It was built by Schwarzkopf. It's a Wildcat model. Basically Schwarzkopf's version of a Pinvari Zyklone. But I always had a great time on Wildcat. I do kind of miss this ride just because it was such a fun ride. I rode it a lot whenever I went to Cedar Point. And it had lots of, you know, really tight high-speed turns. And just, just a great time. I always had a lot of fun on this ride. Fun fact, this is the only coaster I've ridden where I got stuck on the lift hill. And we got evacuated from the lift hill. It was like right after it started going up the incline. But this is the only time this has ever happened to me, so... Wildcat, I'm going to give a solid 7 out of 10. I think it's a really fun ride. A little underappreciated, you know. It's it's nothing too spectacular, but really good for what it is. Great family coaster. As a little bit of a bonus here, I'm going to talk about Mantis at Cedar Point. The way I count credits personally, I don't consider the floorless, I don't consider the stand-up to floorless conversions to be new credits. Because to me, if it has the same exact track and layout, it's still the same ride, even though the experience is a little different. Mantis, not a great ride. I'm glad it was converted into floorless. At least it's a decent amount better now. Quite a bit better, actually. I mean, these stand-up coasters, they're just they are just ball crushers. Just awful. Really uncomfortable. I only rode Mantis a couple times. I kind of wish I would have rode it a little bit more to get a better feel for it, but I rode it a couple times, and that was enough for me to get a, a decent enough view on it as to what I thought about it. Wasn't a huge fan of it, and I'm glad it's Ruguru now. So I'm going to give Mantis a 6 out of 10. It was a decent enough coaster. It wasn't too terrible, but it wasn't great. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I just thought this would be kind of cool to share my experiences on some of these rides that are lost to the past. And uh, let me know what you guys thought about these rides if you rode them, what defunct coasters you've ridden, what you think about them, and uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching again. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.